ಶ ಗಂಶಾಂತೇರ್ದ್ಯೌಶಾಂತೇರ್ ದಿಶಾಂತಿರವಾಂತರ ದಿಶಾಶಾಂತಿರಗ್ನಿಶಾಂತೇರ್ ವಾಯುಶಾಂತಿರಾದಿತ್ಯಶಾಂತಿ ಚಂದ್ರಮಾಶಾಂತೇರ್ ನಕ್ಷತ್ರಿ ಶಾಂತಿರಪಶಾಂತಿರೋಷಧಯಶಾಂತೇರ್ ವನಸ್ಪತಯಶಾಂತೇರ್ ಗೌಶಾಂತಿರಜಾಶಾಂತಿರಶ್ವಶಾಂತಿ ಪುರುಷಾಂತೇರ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಶಾಂತೇರ್ ಬ್ರಾಹ್ಮಣಶಾಂತಿ ಶಾಂತಿರೇವ ಶಾಂತಿ ಶಾಂತಿರ್ ಮೇ ಅಸ್ತು ಶಾಂತಿ ಮೇ ದೇ ಬಿ ಪೀಸ್ ಆನ್ ಅರ್ಥ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಸ್ಕಾಯ್ ಮೇ ದೇ ಬಿ ಪೀಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ವಾಟರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ಆಲ್ ಡಿರೆಕ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಮೇ ದೇ ಬಿ ಪೀಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಪ್ಲಾಂಟ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಟ್ರೀಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ಆ್ಯನಿಮಲ್ಸ್ ಮೇ ದೇ ಬಿ ಪೀಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಹಾರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಮೇ ದೇ ಬಿ ಪೀಸ್ ಇನ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಒನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ಎವ್ರಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಸರ್ವೇತ್ರ ಸುಖಿನ ಸಂತೋ ಸರ್ವೇ ಸಂತೋ ನಿರಾಮಯ ಸರ್ವೇ ಭದ್ರಿ ಪಶ್ಯಂತ ಮಾ ಕಶ್ಚಿತ್ ದುಃಖ ಭಾಗ್ ಭೇತ್ ಸರ್ವಸ್ತರತು ದುರ್ಗಾ ಸರ್ವೋ ಭದ್ರಿ ಪಶ್ಯತು ಸರ್ವಸದ್ಬುಧಿಮಾಪ್ನೋತು ಸರ್ವಸ್ವತ್ರ ನಂದತು ಮೇ ಆಲ್ ಬಿ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹೆಲ್ತಿ ಮೇ ಆಲ್ ಸಿ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಗುಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮೇ ನೋ ವನ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೀರಿಯನ್ಸ್ ಮೆಜರಿ ಮೇ ಆಲ್ ಓವರ್ಕಮ್ ದೇರ್ ಆಬ್ಸ್ಟಿಕಲ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅಕ್ವಾಯರ್ ಗುಡ್ ಟೆಂಡೆನ್ಸೀಸ್ ಮೇ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಎವ್ರಿವೇರ್ ಫೈನ್ ಜಾಯ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಫುಲ್ಫಿಲ್ಮೆಂಟ್ let us now spend some time touching the center of peace and joy in our hearts <coughs> a good way to begin the practice is to withdraw the scattered energies of the mind and bring them to rest on one point that point can be our own breathing let us therefore practice breathing with awareness as we breathe in let us visualize that our body and mind are being filled with love strength and compassion and as we breathe out let us release all the stress anxiety and exhaustion in the body and mind let us practice this way for a while let us now turn our attention to the region of our heart although god is present everywhere and in every one the divine presence can be felt most clearly in our hearts we can meditate in any way we have been taught to remain focused we can take the help of a short mental prayer or a mantra or a divine name let us now spend some time dwelling on the presence of god in our hearts
Om Shanti Shanti Shanti
Om Asatoma Satkamayam Tamasoma Jyotir Gamayam Mrityorma Amrutam Gamayam Aviravir Mahethi Rutrayatte Dakshinam Mukham Tenamam Pahinityam May the Divine lead us from the unreal to the real, from darkness to light, from death to immortality. May the Divine Consciousness fill our hearts and protect us. Our subject today is um, stepping back. Oftentimes, uh, these days, um, there is so much emphasis laid on living in the present moment, of being mindful of what we are doing, fully conscious of every thought, every action that we are engaged in, that the emphasis on this practice may relegate to the background the importance of stepping back and looking at the larger picture. It's almost like if you focus so much on a tree to the exclusion of the forest, then uh, there is something getting distorted there. So today I would like to spend a few minutes um, showing the counterpoint that while it is important to look deeply and concentrate on the activity in hand, it is also equally important to step back periodically and to look at the larger picture. So looking deeply is as important as looking widely. It's like, it's like this. If you if you, if you enjoy photography, for instance. So if you zoom in into something, then you get all the details of a tiny part of the picture, which is good. You need those details. But it's also sometimes good to zoom out and look at the larger picture to see where that little thing fits in. So that's, that's, that's what I'm getting at. That while we need to focus on every little thing that we do, we also need to be conscious about where that little thing fits into the, to the larger picture of our life. <clears throat> Both these practices of looking deeply and looking widely bring a different sets of benefits. Looking deeply improves our work efficiency. It improves, it removes ignorance. Because oftentimes, um, when we just look at things superficially, uh, we may not get things right. And we also tend to get distracted. And therefore, we know the importance of concentration. If your work needs full attention, focus, then that's where you need to look. So it does improve. You're able to get a lot more work done in short time. And also, when you look at things deeply, ignorance regarding that thing goes away. So there is a great benefit to looking at things deeply. But stepping back and looking at the wider picture helps us to put things in perspective and know where everything fits in. So both these practices need to go hand in hand in our lives. I sometimes like to call this looking deeply as looking inside and looking widely as, as, as being outside. So let me explain. <clears throat> Think about, think about the dreams that we have. 
um, of, of was even before we go to the dreams. Um, sometimes when you go to see a movie and of course what you're seeing on the, on the screen is, is captured by a camera when they shot the movie. Now sometimes the camera is standing outside the story and just narrating what's happening. But sometimes the camera might be showing the scene from the perspective of a person. Um, for instance, um, just to get a, a random example, if you have seen a, um, say, a, a Terminator movie, have you seen that? <laughs> so, so for instance, so when this Terminator is going, so sometimes you will have the camera not showing the Terminator, but as if what that Terminator, when he goes, what the Terminator is seeing. So you are kind of inside the head of the Terminator and you are seeing it. So that's one way of looking at it. And then the other thing is also when the camera is standing outside and you are seeing the things objectively. Now when we see dreams, something like that happens. So when you're seeing a dream, sometimes when we see it, okay, let's put it this way. So when we see dreams, of course, we are asleep. So there we are lying in our bed, fast asleep. And then we are seeing a dream. Now, in the dream, we see ourselves. Not always, but oftentimes, we are present in that dream world. Sometimes we are there, but we don't see ourselves because we are, I don't know whether I'm making sense, we are inside ourselves. So what we are, the dream that, the dream world that we see is being seen through the eyes of me in the dream. And sometimes in the dream, I'm kind of watching myself in the dream. Does that, does that make sense? So these are the, the two, two ways we see dream. But oftentimes, later on, when we remember the dream, or when we are, some, we are narrating the dream to someone, we, we switch. We even think dreams that we have seen from within, inside, we narrate as if we are seeing it from outside. And sometimes this can go back and forth. Some of the things, some of the dream world we see from inside the, the, my dream self, and some of the dream that I see is, is it's almost like, um, okay, let me, let me now come back to the waking state. That might make it clear. Now, most of the, when, as we go about our day-to-day -day lives, almost always the world that we see is the world seen through our eyes, obviously. But that means if, 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 if this world is a movie, the camera is put inside my head. So this is how the camera and I'm seeing the world. How and very rarely is, unless you objectify yourself, is let's say the camera is somewhere on the ceiling and you're seeing the world, but you're also seeing yourself in the world. So these are the, this is the distinction I want to make. So seeing the world from inside our heads and seeing the world with the camera somewhere outside in which you see yourself as well. So there are two ways. So sometimes we are said, we are told that um, be a witness of everything that is happening around you. And in some ways we are already a witness because we are experiencing the world. We are witnessing what's happening. But oftentimes we are not simply witnessing things. We are also responding to them. We are also reacting to it. In fact, very few of us really act. We usually just react. And so we are not really plain witnesses. So if, and the example that I often like to give is if there were a camera next to me, what the camera sees and what, what what I'm seeing is probably the same, but the camera is not reacting to what is being seen. While I'm reacting, I might think, oh, there are so many people today and, and 
and all kinds of thoughts and ideas will come alongside my experience of what I see. But a camera doesn't react. So in some ways, a camera is a more neutral witness of everything that's happening. But there's another way of being a witness, and that is to imagine the camera somewhere outside. And along with this that I'm seeing, I'm also seeing myself into the picture. So that's what I really mean by stepping back. By stepping back, I mean not just stepping back from the immediate activity, but also stepping back from my own self. Can I see myself the way other people are able to see me? In order for me to see myself as an object, I will have to get outside myself. So let's say if there's a camera near where that organ is, and I'm kind of there. And so then I'm seeing not just, not that, not simply that all of you are here, I'm also seeing myself here, standing here and giving a talk. So that's what I'm getting at when I say stepping back. So can we, alongside looking deeply and looking at everything, at least occasionally step back and look at the larger picture in which even to ask a question where we fit in into the larger picture. The advantage of stepping outside of ourselves and looking at ourselves is that, and it's not easy, it's not easy because we have gotten so used to seeing the world from inside. Um, but if we make an effort, uh, what it does do, it, it helps to loosen our identification with this body and mind. That because we have gotten so thing attached to this, this is me, that if I get out of myself, can I look upon this as not me, but as this? this person and that's real that's that's the reality that among what's what's the population of the world like seven billion seven approximately so among the seven billion human beings i'm one among the seven billion human beings in the world and so can i just step out of myself and see myself as just one among these seven billions so this kind of a self objectification not easy, uh, but even done occasionally, will help to loosen the, the, the hold that this body might have upon us. It, it helps to loosen the hold of the ego upon ourselves. Uh, let's, let's take an example. For instance, now, well, this is the, the long weekend, Memorial Day weekend, and um, great. All long weekends are fun. There's a lot of things we can do on a long weekend which we cannot do on a short weekend. But even while we enjoy the long weekend or get to do things that we don't get to do on other weekends, um, stepping back would mean also to look at this, well, what is the significance of this Memorial Day? How did it start? Where does this the origin of this day fit into the larger history? And where do I fit into all of this? Is there some meaningful way I can contribute to why this long weekend came about in the first place? So this is what I mean by stepping back and say, we could do it say once, and a birthday is a good time of the year to step back and um, look at our life um, and say, so, well, these X number of years that I have, I have been on this planet, how would I look at my life objectively and see where I have come from, from a, from a young kid to a teenager, my youth and so on, and just see where we stand. Because that gives us a better perspective of where we are. And it then gives us an opportunity to know what we should do 
in the time ahead. But if we never step back, if you're always focused on the, on the tiny little detail, then we sometimes may miss uh, the larger picture. Um, just to give you an example, for instance, just yesterday uh, was the day I, um, thir 39 years ago, I joined the monastery. So now, well, that's one of the landmarks, if you like. Um, and so then that could be one opportunity for me then. And it did give an opportunity, say, 39 years ago, remember the, the day I joined the monastery, what happened, and, and, and some of the things that happened. Um, uh, over the years. So this way of reflecting back on our own life at different landmarks in our lives um, helps us to, to put things in perspective, helps us to know how far we have come. It helps us to realize how far we yet have to go. And that's important. This stepping back, as I said, can be done annually, and, and a birthday is as good a time to do it as any other time, or maybe a New Year day. There's no, there's no rigid rule about this, but, but it's good to do it occasionally. But it's also good to do it daily, if possible. So at the end of the day, before we go to sleep, again, during the day, focus on every activity you do, do it with concentration, do it, do it with with enthusiasm, do it well, do it in the spirit of karma yoga. The end of the day, can you just stand outside of yourself and kind of go through the day's activities in a fast forward mode and see what happened. So it's like putting the day's activities in perspective. What are the things you did rightly that day? What are the things you didn't do well? Which are the things you, if you had an opportunity to go back which would the things you would do differently? <clears throat> so that way, we kind of, at the end of the day, it's like a balance sheet. You know, well, which are good, good things, which are not so good, and then what are the mistakes I made? We get to assess what our strengths are. We get to know what our weaknesses are. We get to know what the kind of mistakes we make. And then next day, we can say, okay, Sure, I make mistakes, everyone makes mistakes, but there is no reason why I should keep on making the same mistake day after day. So once I've identified what my mistakes are, what my weaknesses are, I can say next day, I will make an extra effort to see that these mistakes I won't make again. Again, we, we may not succeed, but to whatever extent we succeed, we're already on the road to improving our lives. And unless we do this consciously, it won't happen by itself. So we cannot automatically assume that, well, automatically we are going to be better human beings. Automatically we are going to be better. No, it won't. By default, it won't happen. Sometimes if we don't make conscious efforts, our life will remain very mechanical and just kind of going with the unconscious stream of life. And even years later, we will find that we have remained as immature in some ways as we were when, as when we were little children. And that's sad, because the time once gone can't be recovered. But if we, every day, if we take a stock of the situation, then um, that gives us a better handle on our own lives. And over time, we will then acquire the capacity to do both of these things simultaneously. To be mindful of every work that we do, to focus on it with concentration, but also to step back and see where it fits in into the larger picture. Because why, why do I keep on emphasizing the larger picture is this. If we don't step back, we may not be able to see how important or how insignificant a certain activity is. Because there are things in life which every, everything is important, everything is precious, but, but it's possible that we may devote more time and energy 
to something uh, which is not as significant in the larger picture and less time and energy to something which is really more significant or more important or more vital in the larger picture. But we won't know this until we step back. So in some ways, I like to see our life as, as um, pieces of um, a jigsaw puzzle in some ways. So there are all these loose pieces. And what we often do, most of us do it unconsciously, but if we do it consciously, we can do it in a better way, to see how some of these loose pieces in our life, where exactly they fit in. And, to, and that's what you do. I mean, for instance, you know, well, we have all played with jigsaw puzzles, and some of us do it even now. We know that while when you pick up a piece, you need to figure out where exactly it fits in. But you also need to step back and see, in this larger picture, where does this little piece fit in? And some of us have, all, in, our, in our large picture of life, uh, many of the pieces might have found, found their place. Some loose ends may still be remaining. We're just trying to figure out where does this fit in? Does it fit in anywhere at all? And so on. Um, the reason we sometimes um, resist change in life because many changes seem to introduce newer pieces into this puzzle. And, and suddenly it's like you are, you are busy putting those pieces into the puzzle and you're halfway through, or say you're 75% through, and then someone comes and says, hey, wait a minute, here are these 50 more pieces. They were in other box, but they really belong here. Then you say, oh, I had no idea. That the, and then you are now stuck with it like, whoa. Now then, well, I may have to kind of remove some of the pieces which I thought were a part of the thing and then try to fit these in. And that's really what happens. Um, all major changes that occur in life, it can happen in, as, as a student. It can happen that when you graduate, and, kind of, and as they say, you kind of enter the world. Uh, well, a new pieces come into the picture. Uh, when you get married, when you start or end relationships, some p new pieces come in or some old pieces go out. And every time, you have to then kind of reconfigure the larger picture. And, and, and that's, it seems like an endless job in life. And, an enlightened being, according to Vedanta, would be someone who has been able to take all these pieces in our lives and fit it perfectly. And a great picture emerges from it. Now that kind of a larger picture, which is perfect in every way, already exists in the lives of all of us. Um, right now, um, we have these loose pieces. And our job is to see where it all fits in. And that's why we need to step back occasionally. So looking deeply, mindfully at everything, looking at each piece carefully is important, but also stepping back and seeing the larger picture. So these are the practices I would strongly encourage that we do, because these practices would help our practice of prayer, worship, and meditation as well, because all of these practices are meant to help bring our life together. Our life, in some ways, is almost like a, I, I, I like that jigsaw puzzle example. It's like these pieces are all disturbed, and now we need to bring it, bring it closer again. And all of these spiritual practices help us look deeply, discover where the piece is, and bring it all together. So stepping back is, is an important practice. And so when in Vedanta books we read about being the witness of everything around us, um, remember these two ways of being a witness. In some ways we are already a witness by being inside our heads. But being a witness by getting outside of ourselves is as important a practice. One of, one of uh, uh, the swamis of our order was um, 
very fond of saying. Uh, there's a there's a um, phrase in in Hindi. Say, "Do din ki zindagi." It just means that well, life is short. Now that's one way of kind of stepping back, because sometimes we might get so involved into something or so upset about something or so um, uh, anxious about something and then sometimes just step back and say well where does it all fit in into the larger picture and then suddenly you realize that what seemed to be an, uh, um, an extremely uh, vital thing from a larger picture is not that vital at all and we can see that in our own lives some of the things over which we we pass sleepless nights, some of the things over which we, we get worked up. And then just six months later, we look back at those very things and we're just going to just smile at them and say, oh, and then you remember, even, even if it's a, a month ago, you say, oh, a month ago, I was so upset. And, and then later on, you are just able to laugh it off. But step, what stepping back does is that, well, if I'm going to laugh it off, a month from now or a six months from now, why can I not laugh it off now? Why should I get uh, excited and worried and, 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 and get anxious about it now? So that's what stepping back does. So that's, that's the um, very brief reflection I had on this, about a short reflection on a long weekend <laughs> about stepping back and so um, yeah so I would uh, encourage that all 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 of us we can make an effort to look at our lives objectively see where it fits in and then uh, that helps would help us um, know our drawbacks and become better human beings Om Jananim Saratam Devim Ramakrishnam Jagat Gurum Padapadme Tayo Shritva Pranamami Muhur Muhu. We bow down to Sri Ramakrishna and Holy Mother again and again. Next Sunday will be 31st May. We'll have Antar Yoga as usual. We'll have a lot of music, um, prayer, meditation, uh, readings uh, by the members. And afterwards, as we do every month, uh, a birthday celebration of everyone born in the month of May. So you're all welcome, um, especially those who are born in the month of May. We'll have a big cake for you next Sunday. So that will be next Sunday. On Wednesday, uh, we will continue with the study of the Gita. Presently, we are studying Chapter 9. You are welcome for that. And on Tuesday and Saturday, our Arati and meditation will also continue as usual at 6 o'clock. We will conclude with a prayer now on page 3 of your books. the divine being who is the father in heaven of the Christians, holy one of the Jewish faith, Allah of the Muslims, Buddha of the Buddhists, Tao of the Taoists, Aura Mazda of the Zoroastrians, the great spirit of the Native Americans and Brahman of the Hindus, lead us from the unreal to the real, from darkness to light, from death to immortality. May we be granted strength, freedom, and clear understanding. May we learn to see God in our own hearts and in everyone around us. May God bless us all and fill our hearts with gratitude, grace, and love. 
Shanti 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 Peace, peace, peace be unto you.